Greg Hardy signing with the Cowboys has sparked quite a public debate and some impassioned commentary from a local sportscaster, Dale Hansen. I'm David Moore at the Dallas Morning News. I'm joined with Sarah Mervosh from the Metro section and Mike Drago from Editorial. We're going to talk about some of these hot button issues. And, and since I mentioned Dale, let's start with when he was talking specifically about the signing of Greg Hardy. And he talked about Jason Garrett, who talk, constantly talks about finding the right kind of guy. Dale Hansen's stance is that, look, you're either a hypocrite or, and a fraud, or you're a Jerry Jones puppet. You can't be both and bring Craig Hardy into this team. You're one or the other. Mike, I know we have something coming out on this. Can you talk about the editorial stance of our paper? I don't know if he's a puppet, but if you take him, if you look at his words, when he's always talking about integrity and character, and you look at his actions, uh, I think you'd have to say he's a fraud. Sure, Dale's right about that. Um, our position um, is that you ought to just quit going to the podium and, and basically lying to us about what his priorities are. Um, obviously, and maybe it shouldn't be a surprise to us, his number one priority is to win. And if a guy's fast and big and, and, and good at what he does, well, yeah, he's gonna hire him. Just quit coming to the podium and telling us that uh, other factors are playing into it because clearly they're not. Mm -hmm. Now you, you spend a lot of time around the Cowboys every day. Well, how do you feel like Jason squares that in his mind? Um, and also Charlotte Jones, who sits, uh, Jerry Jones' daughter, sits yeah. on the NFL uh, Personal Conduct Committee. Personal Conduct Committee, yeah, that was, <coughs> was formed last year, yeah. How do they square their words and their actions? There, there, there is a lot to square here, and uh, uh, start with Jason. I, I think this is, a, this, this is an issue, you, it's situational ethics versus moral absolutes. And uh, I'm convinced Jason is a man of his words. He, he has these convictions, that he has a strong sense of right and wrong. Uh, but you're also weighing what is best for the team, how one individual fits in the team, allowing others to have success. And, and I think that that bar always moves and changes based on each individual situation. And nothing moves the bar more than individual talent. And that is what we're talking about with Greg Hardy being on the Cowboys more so than any other. But isn't issue. it true that character moves the bar very little in the end, in almost every case? What did you hear about DeMarco Murray, who just left in free agency? He did everything they wanted. They applauded him. Great guy in the locker room. Went above and beyond. Uh, very professional. They allow him to walk because they don't want to pay him. But they bring in Greg Hardy to replace him, who has a much different uh, persona, if right. you will. Certainly a public persona on what's going on with him. Charlotte's very interesting as well because he is, he is Jerry's uh, daughter. Uh, she's one of the more accomplished uh, female executives in all of professional sports, uh, brand management for the Cowboys, on the committee you talked about, uh, several committees on the NFL, uh, personal conduct committee. This puts her in a very difficult place because as a woman, and this is why this issue is so difficult, as a woman, certainly her feelings, I would say, emotionally are much different than what her charge is as far as managing the brand and putting the best face of the Cowboys and the NFL forward. How do you reconcile those two? And, and this, is, this is where business gets intertwined with personal, personal feelings and, and how do you conduct business uh, should you have a zero tolerance policy. And, and to me, sir, I want to get to you because it's interesting. Uh, we know a little bit of the, uh, uh, the, the details of what of the Greg Hardy conviction by a judge in North Carolina before it went to a jury trial, which it never got to the trial because the accuser didn't show up. Uh, but can you go through some of those details and how those mesh with, with how the city of Dallas, uh, what they look for, what, what is their profile when they're looking to ascertain whether or not someone is involved in domestic violence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important to keep the circumstances in mind. Uh, this was, these were serious allegations. So uh, basically, Greg Hardy was accused of throwing his ex-girlfriend into a bathtub, pulling her hair, throwing her onto a futon covered in weapons, uh, putting his hands around her throat, and threatening to kill her. So, first of all, this isn't unusual. We see cases like this every day. It is very serious. Um, but Dallas does have a series of questions, Dallas police, when they go out to a domestic violence occurrence like this one would have if it were in Dallas. They'd ask 11 yes or no questions to determine, is this situation at risk for becoming deadly? Could the abuser kill the victim? Okay, so let's look at these questions. Has he ever used a weapon against you? Well, in this case, he threw her onto a, a futon with weapons. I would say yes. Um, has he threatened to kill you? Apparently, yes. 
Um, do you think he might try to kill you? I would say if he threatened to, you would think so. Um, does he have a gun or can he easily get one? Well, he had a whole futon full of guns. Um, has he ever tried to choke you? Apparently, she says that he did, and a judge found him convicted, even though uh, the jury, the jury trial never went and it was uh, dismissed. So again, yes, 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 down the line. So this is a very serious case. And in Dallas, if this were to happen, they would be saying, okay, the victim needs to get to a shelter. We need to um, get put charges against the guy if they're found to be guilty. I uh, get him into some bad or intervention. Um, get him some help to make sure that he, he doesn't follow through and end up killing her. So. You know, one of the victim advocates I talked to suggested, hey, if we hire, the, if we sign this guy, why don't we require him to go to batter intervention classes to get some help? Now, is that on the table, or what's going to happen going forward? Well, my belief is that, that, that Greg Hardy is still on the commissioner's exempt list. Before he can be clear to play in the NFL again, he has to meet with the com commissioner. Uh, there's a uh, expectation that a suspension will be in place, and and Roger Goodell will put into play some conditions for him to be able to play in this league again. I would be shocked if some of the conditions that you spoke about, along with some others, uh, some additional counseling, uh, some other uh, uh, training, uh, the behavioral training that he can go through, uh, would not be as a condition, would not be included as a condition for his return. Uh, a lot of people suspect it's going to be anywhere from a four to six game suspension. A lot of those people weren't Roger Goodell last year who found himself in the middle of a firestorm and had calls for his job every day and was battered uh, for how he mishandled the battering of Ray Rice's then fiance. So I, I think uh, Greg Hardy, the next step in this, where this unfolds, we don't know when Greg Hardy is going to take the field for the Cowboys but there are some preconditions in place and a lot that needs to be discussed before he'll ever take the field again for this team. And one last question for you, given all that, do you think it was worth it? Worth it will be measured by number of wins and performance and what they do. And, and the bottom line of the Cowboys is winning and success. And while they want to present their brand in the best light, I would say the overriding business principle is you're successful and you manage all of these other issues. And I would argue that that's also the overriding factor for all of us. <clears throat> Dale Hansen will be out there at, at training camp. You'll be out there at training camp. We'll all be reading the paper and turning on Fox and cheering them on and buying Jerry's jerseys and paying them 100 bucks to park at a stadium, whatever it costs. Um, I argue that we're all a bit of a hypocrite when it comes to this. Uh, we're worked up and lathered up today, but come September, we'll be in the stands cheering them on. That's a great point. Thank yep. you for this discussion. We'll do it again soon.